Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the third panel of the day. Uh, we have with us Manon from RSM, Nicola from Leaglators, and Claire from Allen and & Overy. And we're going to discuss regarding diversity and inclusion and equality in the working environment, and especially in private equity. Manon will moderate the panel, and I will be here uh, to help to ask your questions in the chat. Hello, Manon. Thank you very much, Heavy. Um, thank you for all uh, being here today. Uh, diversity is always a great topic and uh, we can discuss about it uh, for hours, but we'll try to keep it short. Uh, I have the pleasure to moderate this panel uh, and to welcome Claire. I Hi. wish I uh, let her introduce herself. So hi, thanks, thanks for having me today, uh, Manon and Evie. Uh, so yes, I'm Claire Danda. Uh, I've been working at Ellen Overy for 10 years now. Uh, I am a senior HR business partner and I am particularly involved in uh, diversity and inclusion topics. Uh, so uh, Alan and Avery uh, have recently applied for the label Action Positive uh, that recognizes the efforts made by companies to improve gender diversity in the workplace. So as a firm, we have implemented several actions to improve diversity um, and inclusion uh, in order to give our members uh, the opportunity to show their inner self uh, without fear to be judged and where they have equal opportunity to grow and develop. So we are lucky because in Luxembourg, diversity is something natural. Uh, people come from many different backgrounds and are used to work with people from different cultures. But our role as an employer is really to guarantee that everyone in the office has this inclusive mindset, but also react when it is not the case. Thank you, Claire. And now I let Nicolas to present himself. I'm Nicola Gozes, I'm a partner at Linkletters. I'm heading the corporate team. I've been with Linkletters for 20 years. Um, I'm also co-chair with Manon of the Private Equity for Women Club at the LPEA. I was asked to join as a co-chair uh, because of uh, a bit unusual background. Uh, I went on parental leave in 2007 working mornings only when my first boy uh, was born. Uh, I'm currently working part-time as a partner uh, to spend some time with my children again and some time for myself. Uh, I promote diversity in the team. We have a team that is, uh, that is composed uh, at a majority by women. Uh, and I quite like uh, that and it's quite efficient. So we will discuss uh, why and how. Uh, and why it is um, equality is is making a perfect sense, um, and uh, and and uh, what else? I'm also a rugby coach for my kids, uh, where I learn a lot uh, about uh, management uh, of a, a large team, um, and so I apply the skills I get from being a coach as in rugby. Um, to the team and what I learned as uh, a manager of a 30 people team also uh, when I, I coach uh, the, the kids. Uh, and here it is for my background. Thank you. And uh, perhaps uh, to give you a word on my background, I'm Anne Aubry. I work, uh, I work at RSM Luxembourg since uh, 2014 already. Uh, I'm manager in charge of the fund administration team, um, which is a 50 50, uh, half a man and half woman. Uh, we try to keep the diversity as much as we can. Um, as uh, said by Nicolas, we have uh, implemented the private equity for women club at the LPEA. Uh, this idea uh, came from um, one day I attended the conference. Uh, one of the LBA <laughs> conference uh, at the beginning, um, where Raja Amikwa was uh, president at that time. She was uh, speaking and she was, uh, she was very inspiring uh, for us, but uh, the room was full of black and blue suits. And I was really probably the youngest one. And I was uh, a bit shy and I felt not really at my place. And, um, and Raja told the uh, told to the audience, 
I will be keen to encourage a young woman to speak and feel free to, to come to me and to discuss, which it was not possible on that date. So, and one day I just met her in the restaurant and I said, oh, it's her, it's her, I have to talk to her. So I just jumped on her. Uh, she was waiting for someone at the restaurant and I said, well, it was very nice, the conference, very inspiring, uh, great content, but unfortunately not enough women. And she said, yes, is it true? Let's, let's go out and uh, drink a coffee and then let's discuss about it. And since this date, we uh, wanted to create a private equity for women to give more exposure uh, to women to give them the voice, uh, to, give, to give them also the tips. And also we are open to men, of course, it's really important to say it because diversity comes from women and men and from education, but we will get back to this later. So um, thank you for uh, the introduction and the background. So maybe facing the diversity could be different for all of us, uh, could be different from our uh, the background from our being a man or, or a woman, given your age, uh, given your physical appearance, uh, could be uh, everything. So um, perhaps did you, Claire, as a woman, did you ever felt uh, or faced difficulty one day in your life, uh, in your job or in private life, perhaps? Yes, uh, absolutely. I think every woman has uh, faced uh, such challenges in uh, in their life. Uh, I I would probably say the the the, the biggest issue for women uh, should be the imposter syndrome. Uh, the imposter syndrome is very um, a strong um, among women. Uh, a lot of time women think that uh, they do not deserve uh, things, that they are not capable of doing things, or uh, they, are, they do not accept uh, that they can succeed um, in their uh, professional life. So, and that happens to me every day as an HR. Uh, as an HR, our role is really to challenge the stereotypes because these stereotypes, these unconscious bias are really deeply rooted in everyone, uh, every one of, of us, we have all unconscious bias. And by the way, if I can encourage you to have, uh, if you have not already done so, uh, these tests uh, on the Harvard website, uh, if you uh, just Google uh, Harvard tests, unconscious bias, you will have a, a whole list of tests. And it's really incredible to see uh, that you are not even aware of the unconscious bias that you have uh, on, a, on a daily basis. So that's also part of my job, challenge uh, the stereotypes, challenge also the corporate culture, uh, especially in a law firm, because if I ask you to close your eyes and imagine the typical lawyer, you will uh, certainly see a white man wearing a black suit, that's for sure. Uh, so yes, really we need uh, to challenge this every day help the women uh, to uh, get free of uh, this imposter syndrome. Um, but also, so it's part of uh, rain, raising awareness. So I really believe that raising awareness is really important. But the other thing uh, which is really important is training the manager because they play a key role in this, in all of this, because they need to help people grow and develop. That's their role and uh, show them they are, that they are capable of doing things. They are really act like role models. Uh, if I give you a short example, uh, if you have a meeting, uh, when you have 10 people around the table, it's a fact that uh, men will speak more than women. It's a fact. So we believe that it is the role of the manager to ask them to ask the women to uh, express themselves, to, to show them that their point of view matters and is really important. But what I think is also very challenging is that we are evolving in a very demanding industry, um, extremely rewarding, but also with a lot of stress and time consuming. And that's true that especially in our uh, industry, we have seen many women stepping back uh, in their career when they wanted to build a family. And uh, we tried to give them the flexibility they need uh, to find the right balance for them. But it can 
apply to men as well, huh? but um, uh, that's the issue we had uh, with uh, with women. So um, yes, we, we 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 try to coach them, we try to get them prepared. That's why we have developed a lot of things that I will explain uh, later on. But uh, yes, these are the biggest challenge. But what about you, Manon, as a woman? Uh, what were the difficulties that you went through uh, during your career so far? Ooh, uh, <laughs> where to start? Where to start? Um, maybe when you talked about uh, unconscious bias, uh, what I heard and what I, I, I learned uh, with the Harvard uh, studies, it's when well, the guy uh, just asked um, a panelist, uh, the audience, to listen to to speech. Um, they had to convince uh, the audience to 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 sell something, to, just to, to, to take an example. They have a, the exact same text, the exact same numbers. And the attendant just believed that the guy were more convincing, more, uh, they gave more facts. Uh, this is more real. And woman was probably not, not enough, too, too much in, in the feelings. It is exactly the same text, exactly the same facts. It is, Exactly my daily life. When I, when women try to convince their boss or the, the team or any clients, coming from a guy, most of the time you will hear, oh, this is so great, he's ambitious, he's, uh, he's speaking well, he can, he can, he can do everything. You, you, you will listen to him. And a woman, you will say, oh, she's proud, she's haughty, she's too much, well, she has too much feeling. Is always too much and you will always uh, be considered differently being a woman or a man so when i try to to raise my voice sometimes i'm being uh, perceived in the long, wrong way but the guy will say oh he's really really ambitious that's really nice so it's very difficult uh, from being there <laughs> and it was even more uh, difficult when i was younger when i start my career because i was as you can see blonde uh, I like uh, to have nail, uh, nail polish on, on my hand, uh, and I was a former dancer, so I was uh, in a completely female world, uh, surrounded by women, um, all, uh, all these kind of things, and I um, start working in the finance industry, uh, in uh, the fiduciary world, uh, surrounded by a uh, nerds guys uh, passion by excel sheets which i <laughs> completely misunderstood at the very beginning but uh, i can i felt that i was perceived as who who's that girl uh, who, who who is who is she because she she's too different to be <laughs> to be there and finally i had to to prove that i uh, that i had the right uh, experience and the right skills to to, to do my job and to do it properly, but uh, it was very difficult to be um, young because you don't have the gray hair effect. Uh, men will probably uh, better understand what I say. Um, and I was a woman. So when I speak, uh, it was very difficult to be listened. But with the time um, and following the years, it's becoming, becoming more, um, more easy for me and probably because I worked on myself as well. Uh, I just let it go and sometimes it's too much and you will always face people who will have uh, inner uh, beliefs uh, and it will not change, but most of the time and especially now in this world, you will be supported by men, women to increase diversity. I have a lot of clients who ask for a woman to be on board uh, meetings, to have a, a woman, uh, uh, represented investors ask for it so it's very very uh, now it's becoming better and better but still a lot of work to do uh, but I can see and I can tell that uh, I experience uh, some uh, bad jokes <laughs> sometimes with probably a woman will understand Nicolas will probably not face as much as we did uh, but I'm quite sure he's aware of this isn't it yeah I I thought I was aware, but I'm a man, um, I'm white, I have gray hair, unfortunately. Uh, I'm coaching a rugby team, so quite maleish in appearance at least, even if we have girls in the team uh, and they're playing very well. Um, and say, I can't be the problem. 
I, I know, and I'm not making any discrimination from my perception between men and women. Um, my mom was working. Uh, she was a partner in a law firm, uh, as was my uh, father. Uh, my wife is working. Uh, she's my main competitor, actually. She's exactly in the same position, but at Clifford Tense. She's a partner at Clifford Tense Incorporate. So there can't be more competition than between us. Um, I had a parental leave. She had a parental leave. She was promoted partner at the time in another firm one year before she, I was. And she had the same pay almost uh, uh, year on year. We had exactly the same career. So am I part of the problem? Um, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that I was making any difference. But even if I believe I'm not making a difference, and if my team is um, composed, uh, it used to be composed mainly of women. At some point, we had 75% of the team uh, being women. Uh, no women have asked for a bit more diversity, so we recruited some men as well. Um, but uh, they say, that can't be true. Um, but actually, there were things that I never experienced myself. Um, the bad jokes, um, being asked um, whether I could bring a coffee uh, in a meeting, uh, when, when you start a meeting, you have 12 persons around the table and who is asking who wants a coffee? It won't be the men. Uh, and then, and then if, and, and I was saying, yeah, but if the women volunteer for the coffee, just because they're polite, then they're putting themselves in the situation. I'm not the one asking the woman in, in, in the meeting to bring the coffee. I can make myself a coffee. So if they do it, then why are they blaming me thereafter by saying you accept the coffee? Yes, I was polite as you were. You offered me a coffee, I took the coffee. And I was just saying, well, it's just a question of behavior. So we need to educate women on the fact that actually they shouldn't do certain things where they're putting themselves in a worse situation. They should speak up. They should, and I was always saying they should. I was not asking myself, Am I applying the right behavior internally? Am I actually favoring someone based on certain behavior? And we're in an environment, um, yes, there is pressure, but women can stand pressure as much as men, um, where uh, it is tough, but you can have a very good discussion, a very good argument, whether it's men or women. It has nothing to do with that. Um, but at some point, when it comes to some decision, yes, we come back to the wrong metrics. Um, it is about, we're an industry where we're being paid by the hour. We're being paid by the hour by our clients, but we're not paying our associate by the hour. We're paying a fixed amount every month. And so what is the difference between a young man uh, without kids and a mom in the team? Will you get the same availability? And the answer is no, probably not. So how can you manage that? And, and as a manager, you have that question of what is the most profitable? And the problem is we're applying one single criteria. We're saying, what are the number of hours put on the clock? And then that's where we got it wrong from the start. The question is not, we, we've, we're paid by the hour, but we're selling quality work. We're saying, you need to come to us because we're better than the others. So it's not because we're doing more, it's because we're better. And you can't be better if you limit the number of skills you have in your team. And by just focusing on certain people, whatever the criteria you're using, you're limiting the skills that you have in the team. So actually by looking at it differently and saying, what is the real deal? What I'm really expecting from my people? Do I just want them to work night and day and over the weekend, or is it something else that I'm looking for? And I'm looking for some for people who care about the the team, the other team members. I'm looking for people who care about their client, who want to do interesting job, not just uh, a lot of it. Um, and so you get another balance. So if you bring other factors in the discussion, then you need other talents, and then 
you become smarter in the way you're selecting your people and in the way you're managing them. And so it's not really a question on, do you manage men and women differently? Actually, I have more men in my team working part-time than women, uh, even for parents leave. Uh, maybe because I set the tone in 2007, where this was absolutely unseen on the market. Uh, but at the time, even at that time, it was easier for me to ask my partners whether I could go part-time than for my wife. She did it and she asked for it because I did first. But it was easier for me to ask while it was completely counterintuitive. So be mindful that those in charge and I'm amongst those in charge may not know that. Maybe self-aware because it's easy to say in our team, yeah, there are three partners, they're all men for the time being. Yes, it takes time to change that. I cannot just say, I want equality and I want as many women as I have men at the partner's role because it takes 12 years to make a partner. But because it takes 12 years and it's a daily job, I have to start rather quickly because otherwise I'll never get there. And there's a good reason I need to get there. It's not because it looks good, good on a panel. It's not because clients are, are asking for it. Even if they are, because it is politically correct, let's face it. No, it is because actually there are skills that others don't have. And I'm, by broadening my pool of talent, I'm broadening my skills and I, I'm having a better team. This is, this is so true. May I ask you a question? Um, do you uh, put in place CODAS uh, at Inflators? Yes, we do. Uh, we do have quotas for partners. We probably don't call them partners, uh, quotas, sorry, and, and partners will not like it, probably. Uh, I'm being recorded, but so be it. Uh, the, um, we're not calling them quotas. We're probably calling them objective. You know, we're lawyers. We're playing with words. But reality is, it is a quota from my perspective. And I'm saying that because I was against quota. I was against quota because I'm saying, I'm not making any discrimination. Why would you force me to select under a constraint? Because a quota is a constraint. And from an economic perspective, you will know that the more constraint you have, the less efficient you are. So I say, if you set me a quota, um, then I'm less efficient. Whether it, it's not because the quota is about men or women, or about black people, about that religion, about that sexual orientation, nothing to do with what the quota is protecting. A quota is a constraint and a constraint is damaging my performance. So I was against quota by definition because I was looking for performance. The problem is if you don't have quota or if you don't have objective, as it's called them, then you don't change the situation. And it actually, you actually need to have those figures to know whether you're performing and to realize what I was saying earlier, that actually, even without knowing it, there is discrimination. I do have a track record of recording, uh, of um, uh, hiring about half and half men and women. It is true until about seven to eight years within the firm. And then there is a drop in the number of women. What have we done? There's something we've done wrong. You may say, well, they all became mother. Yeah, even if that were the case, and it's not, even if that were the case, don't we want mother in our team? Is there a reason why we don't? And the answer is no, they are able to, they are able to skills. Uh, and, and by the way, I, I'm working in a certain environment and I'm spending 10, 12, 15 hours a day, maybe, actually probably less, we're over pretending on that. Uh, but I just am spending, what, eight hours a day in the office. Do I just want to see people like me, white male, no woman at all, no mother, not having a conversation? I'm a father. I like speaking about my kids. I do that all the time. So why shouldn't I do that with only male men without kids? It doesn't work. So actually, your work is also an environment where you leave most of your time. There's a good reason why you have this. And quota actually do help. Quota are not a long-term fix. 
they'll just need it for a short term period until we get everyone to realize that actually they're not needed because the statistics have improved, but also because the unconscious bias have disappeared, at least partially. So today, yes, I'm favoring quotas. I hate when I have to say to a man, actually, it would be more difficult for you today. In today's environment, I have two persons, same quality, same commitment, same potential. And I will say to the man, yeah, it will be harder for you because if I only, if I have two, two sits, perfect. If I only have one sit, more likely than not, it will be the woman. Okay, thank you, Nicolas. And, and perhaps I, I can I ask you, Claire, what uh, solutions do you propose uh, at your firm, le, at your level to, to try to increase diversity? Of course, uh, so I can talk a little bit about uh, the label, uh, Action Positive. So two years ago, we applied uh, for uh, this uh, label, which is granted by the Ministry of Equality between men and women uh, in Luxembourg. So uh, it acknowledges the efforts made to guarantee a fair consideration between uh, men and women in the workplace through uh, three pillars. So trainings, the first one, uh, well-being and flexibility and fair treatment. So it's quite a long process uh, to get this level. Um, there are a lot of steps first to complete, uh, such as a satisfaction survey that is sent to all the employees uh, in order to see where we can improve ourselves. Uh, our salaries are audited as well uh, to make sure that there are no discrepancies uh, between the salaries of men and women. And then we have to set up a, an action plan for two years. And at the end of the two years, we receive the label. So it's quite a long process. Um, if I can give you some examples of the actions that we have put in place. So we have put in place trainings dedicated to women, uh, such as uh, resilience, assertivity, psychological tra uh, trainings, uh, psychological sorry, psychological safety trainings. Um, we have uh, put in place mandatory trainings for manager. That's what I was saying before. Manager have a key role to play there. So now uh, manager are obliged to follow unconscious bias trainings. They are also obliged to follow maternity coachings uh, in order to be able uh, to understand the new expectation of someone coming back from a parental leave. Uh, we have put in place also mentoring programs, uh, individual coaching, um, also a large flexibility policy because really flexibility is an accelerator to improve uh, gen gender diversity. Uh, it has been also accelerated with COVID uh, and from now on, now on people are able to work remotely up to 60% of their time. So that's really uh, uh, an increase. And uh, I would say our biggest measure has been uh, the introduction of a partial financial compensation for parental leave. Uh, so as you may know, the government so grants the parental leave uh, uh, compensation during six months, one year, you, you have several options. We noticed that mostly women were taking uh, this parental leave. Uh, and men were reluctant to take this because first of the compensation, because the, com the compensation from the government is stopped at a certain level. Uh, so there is a, sometimes a big difference between the top and what they, they earn uh, at the moment. So they were reluctant about this and also uh, by fear to be slowed down in uh, their career. So the objective of this measure is really to democratize the parental leave uh, by giving a strong signal that there will be no impact at all in no one's career, either men or women, um, while we offer at the same time a significant financial compensation sometimes. So we believe that this measure ensures a greater consistency in the taking of the parental leave uh, between father and mother and hopefully contribute to change mentalities around the distribution of the roles in the couple, uh, especially when both uh, want to have a, a career.
And do you have any uh, results or feedbacks already about uh, it? Has uh, been a huge success uh, because uh, you can take the parent. You're not obliged now to take the parental leave right after the birth. So mm -hmm. we have uh, given the opportunity to take the parental leave until the sixth anniversary of the child. So we have people that did not take a parental leave when they uh, when, well, they gave birth or they, they received their, their first child, but later on. So yes, we, we have a good, very good results and people reacted very, very positively. And I hope it will continue the yeah. next years because so. yeah, we really hope so. so and, I truly believe that the new generation now are becoming more and more conscious with this, um, with uh, the social environment, ESG, uh, even in our film, um, our uh, employees, uh, most of the men who uh, became father uh, recently, I was very surprised, but they all took parental leave, all of them. This is really nice. And uh, yes, we try to encourage uh, them uh, also because the partners uh, at our film um, also have kids they understand what is it and um, and uh, and it is possible to have kids and um, and work and to manage your career but it is true that when you're a woman you feel obliged to take it because you have to take care of your kids in any sense what the people will say um, and also in the same time I would uh, ask myself, what happens if I leave for six months? Uh, should I be replaced? Uh, will I find again my, um, my position, my, um, all my objectives, uh, my, uh, my habits as well? So um, very, very difficult uh, question. But now with men taking parental leave, I can see that it is uh, being differently. So um, we also try to encourage it. And Nicolas will say, uh, I don't know your, your, your position, Claire, but Nicolas will definitely encourage uh, men and women to take parental leave. That's 100% sure. And to have kids in the same time and be partner, it's possible. So it's very, very nice. Yeah, you um, can have everything. You, you, you can have everything. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't mean you do not have to make choices. So um, you can try to get everything, you can ask for everything, but you also have to be mindful of what is feasible uh, or not. And um, uh, what I see in the, with, with the parents um, is that actually um, the first kid is rather easy to manage. It is, it is a complete change in life. Uh, becoming parents, but you still can manage it because um, you're outnumbering him or her. You have two parents, one kid. So actually, it gives some flexibility. It becomes much more tricky when the second is coming. Then you need an organization. Don't believe that actually you can manage everything by yourself. In the same way as in the job, you're not doing everything yourself and you need help. Actually, those who are very successful are mindful that they cannot do everything by themselves. And so you have to choose. You cannot say to a manager, and, and sorry about it, but you cannot say, um, I want to leave at 5.30. Um, I want to, because the crash is, is closing at six. Um, I want to have exactly the same career as the one who is available until eight and, and longer. I can't reconnect. I'd like to, but I can't reconnect because um, the, the, the kids are going to bed only at uh, nine or 10. As a manager, actually, I care about how people are, uh, are going. I care about their life, but it doesn't have to impact me. And, and I, I, it doesn't have to impact the business. It doesn't have to impact the other in the team because that just would be unfair. So it is not that the job or the firm should compensate for your choice. The, the job should acknowledge and make those choice possible. But it's not for the firm where you are working. And so you have to manage your expectation if you're starting or if you're having this conversation. I was once asked, can I work part-time but be paid full-time? I say, no, no way. 
no, no one will give you that. Say, but you say that you were promoting parents. Is it, yeah, I'm offering you the flexibility to work part-time if this is your choice, but I'm not letting you go part-time and pay you full-time. And there was a real misunderstanding in the conversation. It, and, and say, come on, I'm only asking for five, five hours less a week. Uh, yeah, but why would I give you five hours less a week? For free. For free? <laughs> because you decided you wanted to have a family. That's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to judge as a manager whether it is better to have a family or to be a golfer. If someone wants five hours free to go pl golf playing, I do not, it would be a very dramatic bias if I were to say I'm favoring families over sport players. That would be completely inappropriate. But it is very difficult to have that kind of speech, actually. I was said I was absolutely maleish, not understanding women, not understanding parents. You see, no, it's just that you ask it over the top. I'm promoting women, I'm promoting parent leave, I'm promoting equality, I'm promoting diversity. More importantly, I'm promoting inclusion. And for inclusion, you also have to understand that you'll be included in group if you're not damaging the group. And so inclusion goes both sides. You also have to accept that, there are, that you, not, you are not the center of that group because you're being included, because you're being accepted. You cannot rule for the group. And so just be mindful of that. And I, I know it is very brutal uh, as a speech, but actually it has to be fair for everyone. Thank you, Nicolas. I don't know if we have a question in the chat, but uh, feel free to raise any question you might have related to diversity, question you might have to, to join uh, in, in a firm uh, or uh, to, um, to go in your first position, if you need any tips. But, uh, but perhaps I have a question to, to Claire. Do you have any tips? to give to the young uh, generation or to the young uh, workers uh, when they're in the market to, to, to speak about their diversity and to promote diversity, how they can face it? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, first, my first advice is communicate. Uh, communicate on your career plan. Uh, it's not because you're a junior that you don't have um, like you don't want to have a career or you're shy to tell that you want to become a partner. No, communicate on your career plan. Uh, ask for support uh, because nobody is perfect. Everybody has a room for improvement. Um, I would say so revert to somebody, to HR or whatever, if you are the witness or the victim of this respectful situation, that's really important to, to make things move and be convinced that you can play a role in your organization. Uh, if you have been recruited, you have value. That's really important. And you need to show it. Uh, do not keep it for yourself. Come as you are, because the last thing we need as a company is to have an army of clones. So really, it's, I think that's my best advice. <laughs> I have a question as well. You mentioned at the beginning of the call that is not only gender equality. So I would like, uh, if it's possible, to mention other uh, actions and activities that you are uh, doing regarding other. Uh, Yes, of course, we, we have, uh, of course, other forms of diversity and we try to tackle all these uh, uh, forms of diversity at Allen & Overy, uh, such as uh, social background, for example, LGBT, disability. Uh, so to give you some examples, uh, we have developed a, a sponsorship with the University of Luxembourg, uh, which is based on social criteria. Uh, we have uh, organized many conferences around disabilities. Uh, the last one we had uh, was around uh, autism or dyslexia, invisible dis uh, disabilities. And uh, uh, regarding LGBT, we organized several actions uh, because it's also really important. Uh, we are the sponsor of uh, the Gay Pride in Luxembourg. 
uh, we have organized um, also conferences to raise awareness and the last event that we have done is to organize a hackathon with people from the office who uh, competed to work on best practice to implement to improve uh, the inclusion of LGBT people in the office. So the three measures that were adopted uh, in the office uh, was uh, the creation of a guide on how to react when you are a witness of LGBT discrimination in the office or when you hear disrespectful comments. The second action was the organization of a networking event with clients uh, around the LGBT to topic. And the third was, uh, was a uh, creation of a safe uh, phone number to call, anonym when you are a victim of uh, discrimination in the office. So yes, we really try to involve everybody in the firm uh, to uh, together be able to find solution to better uh, include people uh, in the office. Thank you, Claire. We, we do have the same, the same kind of, of programs uh, and, and initiative. Um, I think the legal industry is probably on the forefront of that uh, and is, uh, has been doing that more than, than others. Um, at the beginning, you wonder if that just because, again, it is politically correct. And actually, I truly believe it is not the, the case. I truly believe that actually we react when something is shocking. And, and we, try to, we try to mitigate that because it's part of our DNA uh, to try to address those issues that we're, that we're saying. And we get focused on one or the other cause or one or the other issue because for any reason it becomes apparent. Uh, and, and so the more we are aware, and I was saying earlier, um, I'm in the, in, in the majority. So there are many, many things, many, many issues I haven't experienced. Uh, and uh, I'm not apologetic about it. I'm just saying it so that you tell me and that people tell me, you know, there's something wrong so that I can help fix it. And, and so, for example, during the, um, uh, the, the lockdown, we've discovered that domestic violence was an issue even in an organization like Inclitus. People were sent home. Uh, spending 24 hours a day at home. And actually we also created a program so that we could welcome people and offer an accommodation to people suffering for domestic violence. You see, how is that possible? I say, actually, it's just when we get aware of those things and of the and when we get the signals, then we try to pick them up and to do something. So it is genuine. I do believe, and I've been, and I've been those of, among those, again, I was saying, I'm not doing any discrimination. Why is that an issue? Why should I do, be, uh, do something? Well, if we're not part of the problem, at least we can, we, we can be part of the solution. So we're trying and we're trying out. Exactly. And uh, a tip I will give uh, to, to, not only to the young generation, but to everyone is that even if the firms are putting in place programs, uh, training stations, uh, and everything to, to protect uh, people and to increase diversity and to, to uh, give them the respect, the solution will come from you. In any case, you should be aware of, uh, of what you say. You should be sometimes conscious that if you say something, uh, uh, even a simple sentence that you might believe that it is a... Uh, not uh, uh, not wrong or uh, probably a joke. Sometimes it could be uh, wrongly understood. Uh, it could be, uh, the person could be hurt. Uh, be uh, very prepared uh, with this. You will always face someone with, with, uh, with bad intentions. That, that's for sure in, in your life, uh, whether it is a private or professional life, you will ever, uh, ever face someone with bad intentions. But please do not act as the same as they do. Uh, this is extremely important. Um, be aware of this. Speak about this. Do not, uh, don't be afraid to be whoever you are. You are a professional worker at work. You are. Um, you have been. Uh, 
uh, hired because you are skilled, uh, because you will bring something to the company, whatever your background, whatever your uh, gender, uh, sexual preferences, it doesn't matter. And do not let people to tell bad jokes, ah, blonde hair, ha ha ha. So it's, at the end of the day, it's not funny at all. So you can laugh about everything, but let's keep it simple and, uh, and, and talk about uh, diversity will probably one day bring us to a better world. Well, probably uh, sounds a bit naive, I know, <laughs> especially coming from a woman <laughs> again, but, uh, but uh, it is true, it is true. It, um, everything will come from education. Uh, so be prepared. Keep the, what we said today in in the corner of your of your brain, uh, because probably one day you will face something or you will hear, uh, hear something in your offices. Just be conscious and try to avoid this, such uh, such uh, such sentence or such uh, behaviors. Uh, Manon, if I can comment here, I would like to say that uh, these are great actions and thank you for sharing. And I think that this is a benefit on top of the others for someone to uh, move abroad and work here in Luxembourg. At least on my side, I don't think that um, diversity and inclusion and equality are given to all the countries and to all the people. And I think it's, uh, it's very important on top of the other things to have respect in your working environment. But uh, at the end, I agree with you that everything starts you know, from us. We have to love ourselves and respect ourselves and respect the others as we are expecting uh, from them to do. Thank you. I don't know if you have uh, any questions, but I guess we are running out of time already. Maybe yes. you are the moderator of the time, so <laughs> I let you. I think that uh, you helped us a lot. You gave us uh, very important tips. I would like to thank you. I don't see any questions so far. So if you have any questions, now is the time. Uh, thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Manon, for moderating this panel. Um, I think that we're going to continue with the meetings in the booths. And uh, I can meet again the attendees here with Luis for the last panel of the day. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great afternoon. You Bye -bye. too. Bye. 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 Bye.